where and go back here. All righty. And I'm going to share my screen just to share this flyer so it'll be on for people to see. All right. And welcome. Welcome, you all. And my name is Walisha Wilson, and we are going to get started. Hello, <clears throat> thank you all for joining us today to hear the extremely beneficial info that our guest presenter will present about Project Restart. Just to get a few housekeeping, please keep yourself on mute if you are not speaking and if there's something we don't need to see in your background, please turn off your camera. Also throughout the program, resources will be dropped in the chat. If you're on a computer and you would like to save the chat, you can do so by going to the chat, go to the three dots near the smiley face, click it and click download. Although you may drop questions in the chat, all questions will be answered once the presentation is over in the order they are received to maintain the flow of the program. My name is Walisha Wilson and I'm the founder of New Life Second Chance, which is a nonprofit that I founded after my release from prison to support, equip, and empower other Georgians impacted by a criminal conviction. I'm also an activist and an entrepreneur. Please join us for the rest of this week as we host the last few events of the month to honor Reentry Awareness Month by visiting our website to register for our upcoming events, as well as to donate to the current fundraiser campaigns that we have going to help us continue to do the great work that we do and assist individuals with bus passes, birth certificates, as well as the fees to get their IDs. At New Life, we provide job, job and career readiness workshops, entrepreneurship trainings, and connect our clients to community resources and opportunities and open job positions. If you would like to be on that list, I'll make sure I drop the information in the chat so that you can sign up for that information. Just want to do a disclaimer before we get into the main presentation uh, of regarding using humanizing language when referring to individuals who are impacted by the criminal legal system. Um, at New Life, we commit to using and promoting humanizing language when referring to or reporting on individuals impacted by the criminal legal system. As you can see on my shirt, which is one of my shirts from my business, we are not ex-cons, convicts, prisoners, inmates, offenders, and felons. What we are are people first, but we're also doctors, lawyers, professors, and entrepreneurs. Um, so we encourage you to use these words because using harmful languages such as those terms reduces us to second class citizenship, and that's what we're not. So I always lead with using human person center. Okay, so we're going to introduce our guest. Project Restart is a 12 free week, a, a free 12 week virtual personal development, financial education and entrepreneurship training grant program for justice involved individuals where participants will receive mentoring and the opportunity to pitch for micro grants to be used toward their business startup goals. Today, we are excited as always to have its founder and visionary Tiffany Kirk join us to tell us more about Project Restart, which a program in which I too myself graduated from last year, and it was instrumental in the exposure and growth of my business, Phoenix Recruiting and Employment Services. Tiffany is an avid communicator, wealth builder, and development master. She is a community development manager for Regions Bank and has a strong background in overseeing community development loans, location capital for small business owners, and teaching financial wellness and entrepreneurship. She is a founding member of Project Restart, which was a collaborative effort focused on reducing recidivism among returning citizens through entrepreneurship. She enjoys music, home improvement projects, spending time with her family, and traveling. Thank you so much, Tiffany, for joining us. Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. And I'm glad to see some of you all out there um, obviously are interested in tonight's topic for one reason or another, just like I'm 
interested in, you know, being in this space for many reasons. Um, as Walisha said, I'm a founding member of Project Restart, which really began as an idea many years ago. Um, when I would come across a lot of people that were engaged in this reentry space, and we were all working in these silos, and we would cross paths either at the prison or somewhere at a community program. And the thought just kind of came to me that why don't we put the best of the best of our programming together in one space and deliver it, but not just deliver it because we know that people with backgrounds don't just need education, but they need connections to human capital and human resources, but they also need financial capital. And um, those were the two things that I saw that were missing from you know, a lot of the programming out here for returning citizens. And so I do want to leave enough time at the end to um, allow people to ask questions. So just, you know, think of those questions, feel free to use the chat to ask those questions. Um, and I will also be leaving some time to one of our other graduates that you can see in the background, Sheree, who is now in her own salon um, upon graduating, uh, doing hair. And so um, she's been a rock star of a um, participant of the program. And so my goal is to, to inform you about the program, but first, you know, really give you some background on to why I get fired up about this. And so I'm going to share a little history on, you know, real slavery and what led to today's slavery, because I think that it's important for people to get a context around that, um, how much mass incarceration has, has grown in the past, um, you know, several decades. And then uh, talking about the program specifically, how people can apply to the program, how you can become a donor for the program, and how you could be, become a, a mentor, another partner in another capacity for the program. And so with that, I'm just gonna start by sharing my screen um, with some of the information, um, just to kick things off to, again, help you to understand, you know, why I do what I do, and um, to leave some, some food for thought for all of you. So let me go ahead. And this is actually not the correct screen. And this Zoom always has a way of hiding my documents when I need to find them. <laughs> so let me find it again. All right, so let me try this one more time. Okay, so again, I, I wanna talk about slavery uh, still existing and I just wanna look historically, I think we all know some of the history with, with just traditional slavery, but I just want, really wanna look at how this shift happened. Um, we know that the first slaves were brought here uh, several hundred years ago in 1619, and the U.S. Congress outlawed the slave trade in 1808. We knew it took many years, you know, after 1808 for any shift to happen for those laws to actually be enforced. And as you can see here, during that same period, most of these southern states, um, I live in Georgia, we live in Georgia, Walisha and I, um, Sheree lives in Georgia. I'm not sure where the rest of you are from, um, but you can see most of the southern states were the slave states. Three states are represented with that lighter color and the yellow were not decided states. Um, we know what happened on January 1st, 1863, the Emancipation Proclamation was signed freeing three to four million slaves. They were not actually free as we know. It took many, many years for those that were still you know, under the control of slave owners to be notified and for them to actually be freed. Um, the conversion really began in 1865 with the ratification of the 13th Amendment after the Union defeated the Confederacy in that Civil War. Um, the 13th, amend, 13th Amendment officially abolished slavery. So what this poster says is from slave to criminal with one amendment. Because what that amendment said is that neither slavery nor involuntary servitude except as punishment for crime, whereof of, whereof the party shall have been duly convicted shall exist within the United States. So there's a whole movement around this amendment being changed and ratified again, where this, is, this, this sentence is taken out of except as a punishment for crime whereof the party shall be duly convicted. 
but where that 13th Amendment states that neither slavery nor involuntary servitude shall exist within the United States or any place subject to their juris jurisdiction. So that's known as the Abolition Amendment. And if you're interested in that and doing some research to see where your politicians in your particular area are with that, and at the federal level, that would be something to, um, to look into. Um, so you can see what happened here in 1970, where we had President Richard Nixon in office and declared the war on drugs. And that just continued uh, to increase prison populations um, in a way that I don't think anybody probably um, would have expected, but those that created those policies knew exactly what was going to happen with those. In 94, we know that the crime bill was introduced by President um, Clinton and things have shifted somewhat. Some of the prison populations are shifting. Um, but this is still a major problem in the US. I'm gonna skip this video, but I would, I would suggest that if you all are interested in really seeing um, Jay-Z's interpretation of the drug war that you can look that up on YouTube. It is um, called, What is the Drug War? And um, I think it's a very informational video that he does, but for the sake of time, I'm going to just go ahead and um, finish this piece so I can get to more about Project Restart. Um, it's no surprise and it's no secret that Black Americans are jailed at the highest rate in America. We already have the highest incarceration rates, you know, in in the in the world. But Black Americans are jailed at the same rate as Mexicans, Canadians, Americans, and members of all 28 nation states of the European Union combined. So this is a major problem. It's a major crisis. It's not talked about often. But this is my why. Um, I love my people, you know, and I've been justice impacted. I had a brother who was incarcerated uh, for two years and given a, a 20 year probation sentence, which greatly impacted his chances of really making it. And as a 44 year old man, he has just become a homeowner and just gotten stable employment for the first time in his life, which meant that the family was responsible for helping to raise his children and, and provide stability for them as he was trying to work his way out of what was a life sentence really in a lot of ways um, through that probation and through that, that criminal record. So one of the last things I'm gonna show you, and I don't think this heat graph will actually work because we're not, it's not in a live format, but what you'll notice, um, what, you'll, what you'll know for in today's world that those same states that I showed you as being slave states in this lower portion of the US, the Southeastern United States are still the highest incarceration rates, rate states in the, in the nation. And so slavery has just really shifted from, you know, being someone that works on a plantation picking cotton to somebody being incarcerated and working for little to nothing, um, helping mega million dollar companies earn, earn uh, profits and being released really to nothing. And we're here to really talk about, you know, reentry awareness. That is, you know, the national, not national, but in Georgia, it is Georgia Reentry Awareness Month in July. And so it's it's so important for programs like Project Restart um, to, to be at the forefront in these times. We kick this program off every year in June or July because of this, the timing of everything. And we always start in August. And so I want to just share with you a little bit about Project Restart. So I'm going to get into the other presentation. So I am the founder of Project Restart as I shared earlier. Um, it's near and dear to my heart for, for so many reasons. I'm a former educator and teaching people has always been something that's been passion, a passion for me, but also connecting people to resources. I think we all have uh, the connection to so many different resources. And I always felt that I didn't want to hoard those resources to myself if they were resources that I could share with somebody else. Um, a lot of doors are heavy for people that are coming out of incarceration. And if I can open it or at least crack it a little bit for them to be able to open it for the you know, the rest of that, uh, the rest of the lift of that door, then, then that's what I think my job on, on earth is while I'm here. Um, and so I'm gonna share a video with you. And Walisha, do you know if the sound is set up for the video? It should be. Okay, I'm gonna hit share sound. And- 
And it just say, just when it says optimize sound, just do that. Okay. I've been getting paid a thousand dollars a month, ad, if not more, just from this app on my phone. And I don't know. I'm telling you, between now and April, no later than May of next year, there's going to be the biggest. My apologies. Let me pause this. Okay, my apologies for that. Okay. Are you trying to share a YouTube video? Yeah, but you know, there was another window open and I'm not going right. to risk that again. Um, I'll throw this, this link. Let me see if I can click it. If you okay. send it to me, I can share it. I'll put it in the chat and I'll share it. Okay. Um, so we are a 501c3. We partner with other nonprofits and for-profits and community partners that provide programming, mentorship, and capital to returning citizens. We do a 12-week program. We're slated to start on August 16th, which is Tuesday this year. And we will go all the way through November 12th when we have a graduation and check ceremony for the graduates. Uh, but we're not only doing our formal programming every year, we have year round supportive services for those that are coming out of incarceration or just justice impacted. And it doesn't matter if this is somebody that's recently been released, you know, two weeks ago or 20 years ago, and they're still facing the challenges. I would say that the best fit candidate is going to be someone that has established housing and, and um, ideally transportation or is on a transportation route to make it easy to get to the in-person sessions. But there's no real requirement in terms of, you know, how long the, the charges were or how far back in your past or your incarceration date was or release was. There's really, again, not a requirement there. Um, but the aim of the program really is to align the participants with one of the five pathways, which is either employment. Uh, some people do come to the program that have children to take care of, have rent to pay, bills to take care of, and they really just want stable employment. Other people are going to take advantage of education or training programs, but the, the vast majority of people who come to Project Restart are looking for entrepreneurship training. And so this year, for the first time, we are not going to mandate that everybody take entrepreneurship training. We're going to actually segment people out into one of those three pathways for them to get customized programming based on where they're at. Um, they will take an aptitude test and an inventory coming into the program for us to get a better sense of where they are and what their goals are. And between the, the classes and the mentorship one-on-one -on -one sessions, we're going to really be able to determine which of those pathways will make the most sense for them. And as they approach graduation, they participate in a pitch competition and they re receive funding towards their goal. So again, the success process is the first four to five weeks is all about self-exploration. Who are you? What are you good at? Um, what are some of the interests that you have? We expose them to pathways. This year, we will have an in-person, what we're calling 3E Fair, which is education, employment, and entrepreneurship, where we will have those partner programs and um, employment partners on site to be able to give some background on what types of programs we um, are are connecting them to post-graduation. Um, we'll also have an introduction to entrepreneurship on that date for those that think they're interested or may already be entrepreneurs looking to pitch for capital for that pathway. They are matched with mentors. We have almost a one-to-one -one ratio of mentors to participants, which is a, a great thing because they get that individual attention. They will have access to capital. I will say that year one, each participant got somewhere between $1,200 to $1,500 year two, because some chose employment and to just go on to a, a tuition-free training program. Um, we had a range of $300 in grant money up to $1,500. 
Um, but as long as people work the program and their pitch makes sense based on where they are at, we will provide capital for their next steps. This is not an easy check to, to earn. Um, we are making the, the policies a little different this year where people will have to have different checkpoints post-program to make sure that we know that they are ready for each phase of that funding. So it will be a little different this year. Um, and then we continue to provide mentorship post-program. And I'll let Sheree talk a little when I'm finished um, about her relationship with her mentor and how much that means uh, to graduates. And so in 2020, we did have 20 participants through attrition, scheduling conflicts. We had 13 graduates, 100% of them received between 12 and $1,500. 100% of those graduates from year one now have either an LLC or a nonprofit. 100% have opened a business checking account. Six graduates from that year received laptops for their businesses. And to my knowledge at this point, according to our last survey, zero graduates have encountered new criminal charges. Um, and so that is really the goal of Project Restart is reducing recidivism and increasing success outcomes. So we're proud of you know, the outcomes from year one. Year two, we had more graduates, 18 graduates, 100% received a micro grant between $300 and $1,500. 100% of graduates will or have received um, or established an LLC or nonprofit, has gained employment or began an education or training program. So they've all done those things at this point. Um, we're really grateful for Walisha and her service. She is has been not only did she go through Project Restart year one, actually in 2020, but she's become a partner of the program and assist those that are um, in the entrepreneurship path or track um, to establish their LLC. So she does an entire class for them to understand the difference between the types of corporations or how to incorporate. And then she also does one-on-one -on -one sessions with them. And we, we provide the funding for those individuals to get their um, companies established. And so again, we're very grateful for uh, New Life Second Chance or actually Phoenix um, Employment. I forget the entire name, Walisha. Phoenix I know Recruiting and Employment Services. Recruiting <laughs> and Employment Services. Thank you. I know Phoenix. Um, and, and so in the off season of Project Restart, what we're doing is we're providing clients with additional um, resources. And so you can see the breakdown here. 44 clients have been served outside of our traditional 12-week program, um, have provided either employment or entrepreneurship resources, housing resources, transportation, as well as laptop resources with through a partner of ours called Inspire EDU. And so we're proud of those numbers as well. Hopefully one day we'll have a physical location where we can do these types of programs um, on a daily basis. Um, so these are our Atlanta key partners. Um, Georgia Microenterprise Network is a partner. They provide our platform for us to um, utilize for our networking during the program called uh, Mighty Networks, as well as a place for us to store all of our, our homework assignments, all of our guides that we share with participants. And so they provide that to us free of charge. They also sponsor the entrepreneurship trainer um, who has his own company called Heroes International. So they sponsor his, um, his pay for him to do his entrepreneurship training. And they also provide the space at the Russell Innovation Center for Entrepreneurs um, in Atlanta. And so we're very grateful to uh, Georgia Microenterprise Network and they issue the micro checks or micro grants at the end of the program on behalf of uh, Project Restart. Um, but Offender Alumni Association is another partner, Redemption and Advancement. And my original nonprofit, Lifers Inc., is where uh, the majority of the program curriculum for the first section of self exploration comes from. Um, our At Atlanta education and training programs are here. We've got some great new partnerships this year uh, with KBC Transit Training at the top. They are actually a CDL training school. So for those that are interested in going that pathway, they, they have Atlanta Technical College, but they also have a new partnership partner with KBC training uh, or transit training. Um, Automotive Tech Training Center teaches individuals how to uh, repair vehicles and they also get placed in, in employment with, um, with uh, car dealerships. We've got Construction Ready as a partner for those interested in construction training. Tech Bridge for technology training. Um, I'll give a couple others here. A Truckpreneur is a program that teaches individuals 
how to create their own box truck or cargo van business for delivery services, which is different than the CDL. Um, so that would require someone to obviously at, at some point have enough capital to purchase a cargo van or a box truck or know how to lease it and, and be able to make their own money. Um, we've also got a partnership with Georgia Tech with their LEAP program for a supply chain and logistics certificate program. And they are also um, placed in employment if they are um, ready for it when, once they complete that training. And we've got two new partners this year at the bottom, Streetlights, which is a film production assistant training program for people that want to be PAs on sets of film in Atlanta. And Set South is a very similar program that does the same thing. I believe the difference is Streetlights is a four week unpaid program and Set South is a six week unpaid program. So this would have to take you know, the individual not needing to you know, work a full-time job during this, there are some type of sacrifices that would have to be made, but that gives you an idea of, of the training partners that we have in place for those that are seeking um, you know, more certification, more education. And then we also have partnerships with these employee groups, which are WorkSource Georgia, CEO, as well as for those that take the transportation pathway of CDL or um, will be mainly the CDL folks, 440 Trucking, which is owned by Kevin Skidmore, who's a partner of the program. Um, and so and he's that, formerly incarcerated and he is formerly incarcerated. Yes. Important. So we really try to partner with as many organizations that are either owned and run by people who are formerly incarcerated or are specifically designed for people who have backgrounds. And so we're really proud that we're growing, you know, that those partnerships in that space. Um, there are several ways to give, um, you know, we are sponsored by Regions Bank primarily each year at a $10,000 level. This year, we were also given a $5,000 grant by Chipotle. Um, we were given another $500 grant by a smaller um, entrepreneurship program for women. But most of the other money comes from private donations, friends, family, community members, and people who believe in Project Restart. And so um, in the chat, I don't know, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and throw the, I'll wait until we close out of this. I will put the link for the donation sites in the chat as well as the, um, I think I can see, okay, well, Alicia has already done that. Um, and then the application is found on the website, but I'll also put a direct link to the application. Um, but we are always looking for sponsors um, to sponsor an entire program. Um, we've been running this on bare a bare budget of about 22,000 a year, but to really run the program um, with salaries included or to run it twice without salaries, that would be a, a $50,000 contribution. Um, gold sponsor is at 25 and then a, a bronze sponsor. And this will be moving into next year to sponsor the 2023 program. Bronze would be at a $10,000 level. And so with that, um, I'd like to see if, our illustrious uh, graduate Sheree Jackson is able to speak for just a couple of minutes. I know you're busy over there on somebody's head, um, but Sheree, I just wanted to give you a chance. I have a couple of questions and then I just want you to just speak openly and freely, you know, um, and, and address whatever you'd like to address, address about Project Restart. But, um, you know, I want you to share with those that are on the call today, about the importance of programs like Project Restart and not just Project Restart, but the other resources that you found helpful um, and necessary once you were released. Um, so if you could just address those two, just the importance of Project Restart and or programs like Project Restart in your reentry journey, as well as other resources and things that were really necessary for you to get that second chance. Okay. Um, the next, what I would say necessary about Project Restart was it gave me a chance to see life differently, like things that I had no clue about that people just don't teach you about. We were taught that stuff and not only were we taught, we were giving people to kind of help us every step of the way. And so I was given an awesome mentor, um, Tawana Woods, and I don't care what it was, she broke it down to me in a way that I can actually understand it and want to change my life to do something different than what I was doing. And so um, me being a project restart, if I would not have had 
the support from them, women in transition, the, rege um, the de redemption program, and then my dentist. Like, I have a great support group. And, like, this is one of my clients. She's been with me since her daughter was one. Her daughter's 13 now. So just all these people that have been in my life to, you know, talk to me along the way and help me to see it differently instead of let me stay in a place that would cause me to go back. They helped me to acclimate back into society. And so um, Project Restart gave me a chance to come in a place where I wanted my own salon, but they helped me to get a space to where I, I have my own salon within somebody's salon. And this is um, the room that came with being from Project um, Restart, um, it's a, a big shop, but I have my own shampoo bowl in my room, decorated nicely. I have all of my own things in here, you know, and so it just gave me a sense of having my own stuff, but not having to worry about all of the overhead of having my own stuff. And so um, the importance of all of this, what I would say is most people come out and they don't go back to they want to, they go back because they don't know what else to be different than what they was doing going in because they don't have nobody to show them nothing different. And so with Project Restart and everybody else, they showed me something different. And so it gave me a head start that I probably couldn't have got on my own. Or if I did, I would have to do different things to get there that I didn't have to go through. So. Thank you so much. Yes. And congratulations, Sheree. And the shop is beautiful. Oh, I just love it. Yes. It, I know when I when I just talked to you, you said everything's complete now. You got your own bowl and you got your own dryer, and I think that was the, that was the last two things you were really waiting on to have kind of your complete separate space there. So we're really proud of you. And I have to say, Sheree was just a model participant and member of the program, showing up every week, very committed, very diligent about and you know maintaining the relationship with her mentor. When her mentor told me she took a trip to Warner Robins. And, and stopped off to see Sheree, I was just like, that's what mentorship is. And I was just, you know, that is what we look for, you know, in Project Restart to just build out, again, your human network, um, because that is, is a lot of times what's missing. And like she said, you know, people don't choose to, you know, get out and do wrong. You know, people need the, the connections. They need the information. They're hungry for information so often. And um, I'm just glad that you're doing what you're doing. And um, I'm, I really appreciate you sharing you know, that backstory. And, and Sheree was just released in 2019 and, you know, before the pandemic and to be able to make these adjustments during a pandemic and still do what you're doing. I mean, it's just, it's really, really your, your efforts that, that made this possible. So thank yes. you so much, Sheree, for sharing. You're um, and I have to say, Sheree, you're off, you're off paper completely when next year? Oh, no, ma'am. October the 3rd. Oh, October this year. Okay. So uh, that'll be something else to celebrate because we know that will open up even more doors for you and have less restrictions for you. So, yes. um, <laughs> yes, travel. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Thank you, Sheree. Yes. I want, I want to, you know, hear from, I know we've just got a few people on the call, but if there's anything that y'all would like to share about yourselves, why you're here today, if there is, you know, some background that you'd like to share of, of what brought you here today or a resource that you feel would be valuable to share with the rest of us, I'd love to hear from you at this time. Well, my name is Robert. Um, I originally came here because I was out of work. I was looking for a job and looking for resources that really looking for, you know, trying to find a job. And because uh, it's, it's been kind of hard on me lately to find it, to find work because of my, my uh, criminal past. And, and uh, I got to say, though, being from California, I was born and raised in California. What you guys are doing out here, what you two ladies are doing is just incredible work. I mean, you don't see this type of stuff. I, I haven't seen this type of stuff in California, you know, by and large, you know what I mean, especially by our people. You know, so, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of blown away. And another thing, too, you were uh, about the 13th Amendment. It's funny that you brought that up because years ago, like in the mid 90s, I discovered that I actually read the uh, 13th Amendment because we're always taught in school, oh, the 13th Amendment abolished slavery. But and most people just repeat that just because they hear it all the time. Right. You know, and that's what we're taught in school. But 
you know, it just shocked me how many people, including myself, had never even read it. Because when you read it, there's no way you can get out of that that slavery is abolished. The only thing you get out of that is that slavery is no longer over here, it's over there. There's a loophole. Right. Continue, so, right. So and it's funny though, because back in the back during that time, um, I guess the world really wasn't ready for uh for that type of message, you know. But they're they're, they're it's like people are more receptive to that now. You know, I That's guess right. people are getting tired of the lies and and the deception and, and all that. I agree with you. I agree. And it's it's time. I think that the country is more awakened than ever before. Right. And um, people are tired of being bamboozled. People are tired of just accepting what we're told to be true and right. to be factual. Right. And, um, you know, for certain demographics being blamed for this, that really should not be blamed, but actually many times are victims of poverty, are victims of their environments. And, um, you know, it's just, it's, it's time for a change. And if we can't change it in this lifetime, at least we can change, you know, the lives and the trajectory of those that are being released. And I think that that's, you know, why programs like this and what Walisha doing, is doing, why we exist. So right. I think Sheree is Sheree is proof. I mean, between me, I'm on my third business. Sheree is proof. Now, had she been in a situation where it came to a crunch that I got to get money, people do what they need to do to take care of what they need, their shelter, their food, taking care of their kids. Now, if she was to the point where she just didn't have anywhere to go and didn't have that support, who knows what she could have done. But programs like this that said, you know, we got you to give her the funding that she needed to actually go in and get her shop where she can go in every day to set her prices, to get her business. She a business owner, she a boss and she doing that is that stop recidivism in its tracks right there. And that is why it's so important for people to have education, employment or entrepreneurship. People need support and pathways to success. That's and if right. you don't give them that, we go back to doing what we did, what caused us to get in there. But we have to also understand that if this is my activist kicking in, that the prison system is a business. That is why you see so many folks going into the system because people want to benefit off free labor. So let's just get people to get free labor. You know, that's why they don't want to teach you education in prison. That's why you can go to school and be a barber in prison for 20 years, but get out in the state of Georgia and you can't get a barbering license because that's according right. to Georgia, you can't get a barbering license with a felony. So that, I mean, you can get it depending on what your charges is, but you have a waiting period, but you, most people can't step foot out this door and go and get a barbering license without having to go through all this red tape. So it, it sets you up for failure. The red tape, but anybody can go and get, because the only thing is they, they do give us a hard time. I yeah. ain't gonna lie. Yeah. I said, I I've thing heard I about it. They will give it to you. So me and my son-in-law, we he came he came straight out of prison with school. He just graduated and now he's licensed. But um, they do give it to you. They just put stipulations on it. Mm -hmm. So like, I was to mess up before I get on parole and go back to prison. I lose my license for the rest of my life. I'll never be able to get licensed again. Ugh. So that's put hard stipulations. But I thank God for that because when you think about getting in trouble, you think about all that you're going to lose. You don't just yeah. think, well, if I make this rash decision, when well, I'm to start over. You think about there is no start over in this, and this is my right. path. To lose that for good is a hard thing. So, it makes so what they have to set up, I think it should be. Yeah. Thank you for that insight. Mm -hmm. And is there anyone else that would like to share why you're here, who you are, and why this was important for you to, to show up this evening? Okay, I think that is, did I hear somebody, Michael Hines? Yeah, what's going on? Okay. Can I asked, hear me? Yes, I can hear you. So can you introduce yourself and tell us what brought you to the session this evening? Yeah, no problem. My name is Michael Hines. I'm currently on parole. Uh, I um, was introduced to wonderful groups like this through Alicia. He's been like a lot, really hopeful. She gave me a lot of hope in my life. My life is changed, as y'all imagine. But you know, I'm, I'm making it. 
God good. And look how look how dedicated I am. So I'm at work. That's it. Look at that. Got two folks on here working. I love it. Boy, look at it. I work here and I got my same charges as the same plan. They don't come get us. <laughs> You're breaking really, up really I, bad, Michael. I, I just really want to. Yeah, you're, break, you're, you're breaking up. So, Probably because uh, you're in that warehouse, but you're breaking up really bad. I just want to say thank you. That's all. Okay, Michael, we're going to have to move on because your your service, I wish we could hear everything you had to say, but your service is breaking up. I'd like to know what Angela wants, what kind of business Angela wants to start. Angela, do you want to share? Uh, yes, um, I'm actually at a transitional center, um, so I am not quite out the door yet. Um, I guess one of the questions I um, had, uh, you mentioned that they're in-person classes, and so you don't have an online type of setting, I'm assuming, just yet. So the, the last two years were 100% online with the exception of the graduation, which we did allow some people to attend that graduation uh, virtually. So actually the last two years have been, you know, optional to be a hundred percent virtual okay. this year, you know, we changed the format to a hybrid just because we do feel that there's some value when we get to the financial education topic where we do a budgeting simulation and the education, employment and entrepreneurship, uh, entrepreneurship fair, that there would be some value to just seeing people face to face. Absolutely. So I won't say it's a hundred percent a no, I would encourage you to apply because it really will depend on the volume of applications as well as the space that we're using for the in-person class, class if we're able to do a hybrid where we deliver it through Zoom while we're also doing in-person. So I would just say to, if you can apply, do you know what your release date is from the transitional center? You know, <laughs> in Georgia, that can be really iffy. It's supposed to be yeah. last September and we're still kind of you know, going around in circles. So no, not at this point. Um, okay. Like I said, I am at the transitional center. So hopefully in within the next year, but it's it's still just kind of up. Um, and then the other thing that I had a question on, I'm assuming that you do not, uh, you did not have to serve or have charges just in Georgia, but this is open to people wherever yes. they may have served. Okay. All right. Yes. Um, as far as what I want to do, I'll kind of answer your question. I have, um, since I've been incarcerated, I received an associate's degree in human development and social change. Um, then I have gone on to get, uh, I will be getting my degree in psychology. Hopefully this December, we're working out some kinks on that. Um, and then I'm going to go on for my master's in positive psychology. So I'm very um, driven when it comes to um, thriving and flourishing. Um, I am in Georgia. I was very blessed to go to Life University. They have a fantastic program that I've been part of. And um, and have worked with, which is amazing. Um, and when I get out, I really actually, believe it or not, have a passion for um, helping convicted felons start their businesses because I was a 25-year business manager. And so um, that structure was something that um, that I just really loved and was good at and wanted to make sure that, um, kind of like what you said, you have that education, you just need to share it. You need to try to help others thrive because that's that's what that's what really changes it. Um, I know that higher education is a huge um, reform, um, positive reform measure. And then I know being able to own your own business and have that autonomy of knowing that you're a success in your own right, even after going through what we've gone through is amazing. And so um, I think that that's, um, that those are things that are just very important and I'm just having a very deep passion for it. Thank you for sharing that, Angela. You're welcome. And and I, I I'm always I'm always uh, energized to see people that seek us out and you know want to find a way to make it work for you to be able to be a you know a member of the program. So I'd again encourage you to apply. And we are going to start our first round of interviews tomorrow, but the program doesn't start until August 16th. So we'll have several rounds of interviews to just see you know, what, what's out there and who's seeking what from the program. We just like to get a feel of people, but this is great that we had a chance to meet here today. 
So thank you for sharing that. And it sounds like you're well on your way to success and great space to be in with helping felons to start their own businesses. Much needed, like what Walish is doing. Thank you so much. And I am going to, uh, it had my ears cringe when I heard both of y'all say felons, felons, felons. I want us to really, really, really work on not calling ourselves felons and ex-cons and convicts. And I know so we've heard it for Thank you. We've heard it so long, whether it was come here, one, three, five, eight, seven, four, five. You know, we've heard it so long. And to get ourselves out of that mentality of that is what we are, because that we are so much more than that. We are people first, but we are people who were formerly incarcerated, we're people who are just as involved, and we are people who are business owners. And so I really, really want us to do that and work on that. Thank you so much, Tiffany. It was a great presentation. I did drop some links in the chat. Um, tomorrow, the 19th at 6 p.m., we're going to be having an event called Broken Crayon Steel Color, which is gonna be all about inspiring each other. We have my friends on the line, all are formerly incarcerated. We have authors, a doctor, um, business owners, who are all right here in Georgia, a few of them are uh, in different places, Philadelphia, but just to let us know that regardless of what we've gone through, we can still be used. We still have a purpose in life and broken crayons still color, and that's what we are. And then we're rounding out this reentry awareness month. Um, this is our sixth year of having the governor uh, approve our request to recognize reentry awareness month throughout the state. And so our last event will be a vision board workshop because we want people to focus on their vision board, their goal setting, uh, whether that's starting a business, whether that is to control your anger, whether that's to get better in your social skills, whatever your goal setting is, once you all to register for that, that'll, I'll be facilitating that on Wednesday at seven. Um, and we have opportunity for folks to win um, gift cards, bring your vision board, have them together and share them. And um, I dropped those information in the chat. But the one last thing I want to drop in the chat before we leave was an organization called the National, Asso the National Association of Formerly Incarcerated Business Owners. A lot of times we go to these business things. We have people, whether you're a school teacher or you're going to folks who are brick masons. And sometimes you may be the only person or maybe one or two other people who are formerly incarcerated. Well, this is a national membership of entrepreneurs and nonprofit founders who are 100% just as involved in formerly incarcerated. Um, the website is still up and running um, and to just click on the link to find out more about the membership. And it's also, you don't have to be in a started business, but you want to be, if you're thinking about starting a business or growing your business, please click that link and I'll make sure I send that to you all as well. Um, we dropped, Tiffany dropped the direct link to the application as well as Project Restore. The deadline is July 22nd, which is this week. So you want to go ahead and get the application in. Just like she said, interviews are going. And I can tell you that this is not one of them fly by night uh, classes that you come in, turn your camera off and just go to sleep for the whole hour and a half and wait back up at the end and get out. This is an intense training program where it teaches you from the beginning to the end of how to get your business started, how to get your business branded, how to you know, market it on social media, um, to talk about your finances, to get mentors. So it is a, an excellent opportunity and it's all free. And it's going between the beginning and in, in the middle. And even when you graduate, it's not like, oh, okay, you got your LLC, bye. There's mentorship throughout the entire year even after, you know, after the program ends. So it is a great opportunity and I hope you all will take advantage of it and apply for it. It's a great, great program. Thank you. And please share it, you know, please share with other people and, and um, send them our way. If, if there's other questions, you know, our, our contact information is on our website. I did have two questions that people were asking that we received. Is this only limited to people in Georgia? And do you have to have a criminal record? So this, the same answer is true for what I shared with Angela. Depending on the volume of applicants that are in Georgia, we want to give priority to those that are kind of in the Atlanta metro area, just that mm -hmm. because of the in-person classes this year. Um, but we, if we don't get enough applicants, then we may decide to open it up to those that are outside of the state. But that also is dependent on if we can do a hybrid delivery for the classes that are going to be in person. And the second piece I, I missed, Walisha. Do you, do you have to have a criminal conviction? 
Yes, we are looking at, we're going to do a background check this year. We've, we've, we've taken yeah. people's word at face value the last two years, but in order for us to continue to get funding, we want to make sure that that's who we're serving. Yes. Okay, and Robert. And, and I'm sorry, where's the link? I, I, I wasn't, I, I, it was kind of just ironic that it's like a background check in reverse, but um, where's the link again for the application? So, so I put the link, if you see I, in, in the chat box, if you could open that up at 637, I inserted two links there. And one is for if, for giving a donation and the other is for the program application. So, yeah, so if you see that, let's see, I just dropped it in there again. And thank you, Michael, it. I see your applications in. Okay, I don't so- see a chat box. Okay, could be when you're, are you, are you on your phone or a computer? I'm on my phone. That could be why. It's you little... should see a number pop up. You didn't see a number. I've dropped like three or four things. So you should see like something popped up with one, two or three. That means something has been put in the chat. But if you're on a phone, you would click the three dots and go to chat and the chat is there. Okay. But I have your okay. email. As soon as I get off this with y'all and I'm gonna go eat me a little oh, something, I'm gonna see. Okay, you got it. Okay. I see it. And it's quick because Michael's already put his application in, so apparently it's very quick and short. That is so. Quick. I, so, so I can um I can I can access this even when this ends in the Zoom. Yes. Okay. Well, the chat. Well, Alicia, you're better at this than I am in terms of saving this transcript from the chat. Is he able to? If you click on it now, Robert, you'll just have that page open whenever you're ready. You're yeah, still I, that's that's what I did. <laughs> Okay. This is what, and the easiest way to do it is basically go to Project Restart ATL. That's easy to remember. ProjectRestartATL.com. And on the very first page, there's a red button that says application. That might be easier. Thank you. All right. All righty. Well, thank, thank you. you and Andrea, so we didn't hear from you, but thank you for joining tonight. Andrea is one of my board members, so she's I got always okay. supportive. <laughs> good. It's good to have that support. And thank you, Sheree, for taking your time out. And we'll talk soon. And I, I hopefully see y'all at another point in the future. Anytime. Thank you all so much. Yeah. And thank you, Tiffany. Thank, thank you, Walisha. Thank you. Thank you.